Welcome to the cooking show where everything is just winging it and I don't plan these out much at all. I'm back again with another video. Okay, you're making kimchi again. In the past when I made kimchi recipes with, you know, like traditional red spicy kimchi, I get asked all the time if it's possible to make it where it's not spicy. And for that type of kimchi, I would say no, because that's supposed to be spicy, basically. There is an alternative kimchi that we are gonna make now called water kimchi. In Korean, it's called mu kimchi. So we're just gonna make that right now. I've only ever really made this once before, but it's kind of simple. It's actually, it's a bit more complicated than regular kimchi, but in a way, I think it's also just easier. But we'll just get into it anyway. Let's just do it. You can make this as like simple uh, or as complicated as you want. I am just gonna go for like the really simplest way we can do this. We've got Chinese cabbage and a daikon radish, which is what we're gonna actually be like sort of fermenting. For like the liquidy water brine thing, we've got a uh, Korean pear, but you can use an apple. I have, I just happen to have Korean pears already, so I'm using that. Got an onion. Normally it's a brown onion, but it shouldn't really matter. A little bit of gochugaru, which is chili powder, which shouldn't really make it spicy at all. If anything, just give it a bit of color, a bit of flavor, and then garlic and ginger. You can make it more gingery or like less gingery or more garlicky or less garlicky if you want to. This is just like a really like basic recipe. There's no set amounts in this. I'm actually gonna take the outside leaves off of this just cause they're usually the most sort of like gnarly. Make a little cross mark at the bottom here. Just rip it. And that tends to rip it like really nice and evenly down the middle. Just like that cut these up even more because it just makes it a bit easier to serve. Just do the same with every single piece. We're going to salt this, but there's no set amount of salt because we're going to wash this out anyway. We're going to rinse out all the salt. You do want to use either sea salt, kosher salt, or like non iodized salt because you don't want any of that iodized salt that will kill off any good bacteria or like good yeast that's gonna ferment this. So I'm just gonna give this a really like liberal amount of salt. I'm using kosher salt. Kosher salt's not really that common in England, but I do have some, what's that American brand? Diamond kosher salt, I think. I just happen to have some, so I'm using it. Carefully just distribute all this salt. And just let that sit for the entire time that we're going to be doing the rest of this. This salt's going to slowly just draw out all this moisture. <clears throat> the next step, I got my blender out because we're going to blend up the onions, the garlic, the ginger, and the Korean pear. So I'm just going to take the ginger and garlic. I'm just going to throw that in there for now. I'm not actually making that much. So I'm only going to use half of this onion. Just cut this up. Half, quarter. We'll throw that in. And then for this Korean pear as well, cut half of it now to use in the blender. Make sure you cut the seeds out. I'm just gonna roughly cut this up. It really doesn't matter because we're just gonna blend this anyway. That's all ready, we're gonna set this aside for now. So actually now what we need to do is make a brine and when it comes to brines, I love to work in percentages, like making like a 1% brine or a 2% brine. It just makes it so much easier. But everyone online refers to tea, like using tablespoons or cups and all that kind of stuff. I don't really like that because it's so inaccurate. So I'm going to go ahead and assume this is going to be like 3% brine. So I'm going to make a 3% brine purely based off the weight of the water. So that should give us like a really nice light brine. I'm gonna use the container that I'm actually gonna ferment this in. Always wanna use a scale. Well, I'm gonna use bottled water, but you can also use filtered water, but just don't use like tap water because that has like chlorine in it, which is no good. That's not gonna work, I need it bigger. This one's better, but I need to wash it out. This is actually a kimchi, like a container that I ferment kimchi in often. It's just kimchi stained, which is gonna to be totally fine. It doesn't actually smell. It's just stained from kimchi. And since this is gonna be kimchi anyway, should be all right. 2,000 grams of water, 2% 2 of 2,000 is 40 grams of salt. And again, this is <coughs> sea salt, kosher salt, non iodized salt. Should be all right. 
Did I say 2%? I was gonna do 3%, right? 20 more grams. Welcome to the cooking show where everything is just winging it. And I don't plan these out much at all. And I need more salt. I'm gonna use my flaky salt. Perfect. Mix that up. I'm gonna set this aside now and then blend this up. I can't move the blender over here right now, so I'm just gonna go off screen, blend it up, and then just come right back. Blended. Got a sieve, some cheesecloth. I'm gonna do it like this. The chili flakes, which is gochugaru, and then add my blended paste. And we're not actually gonna add the solids to this. We're sort of just like adding the essence of this stuff, like a whispering of the flavor. Roll this up, squeeze some of that out. Ready, you can see the color coming through. I'm actually gonna get it in there and just massage this inside the water just to really get all the flavor out. I've set aside the brine. It tastes, I had a little taste, it tastes great. We're gonna come back to this and just give this more of a massage. And already this is becoming a lot softer. Wilting the cabbage is the bit that's gonna take the longest time. I was in Tesco yesterday and if you're not English, then Tesco is like our, one of our biggest supermarket chains. And in Tesco, they were selling daikon radish, which they call muli, and they were selling Chinese cabbage, which they call like Chinese leaf cabbage. So you could actually technically make this entire recipe from Tesco without going to an Asian supermarket. I'm gonna cut them into halves, and then depending on how thick you want the slices, gonna cut them into little semicircles, just like that. Just that big, that's totally fine. And actually just gonna add that straight to our brine. Oh yeah, there you go. And a little snack. Daikon Ranch is actually surprisingly sweet. Trusty bench scraper. Peel our pear. Cut this in half. So the pears, I'll cut them this way and then cut them into slices like this. Just basically like really nice, satisfying bite sizes. And it's entirely up to you as well. And this is gonna add a bit more sweetness to this. But honestly, this is already tasting pretty good. And then once it ferments as well, it's gonna taste even better. So now we've got that set. We actually, what I do have as well, I totally bought this for this recipe and I just completely, I guess I just didn't see it in the fridge. But I've got garlic chives or Chinese chives. But these are really, these are gonna make it really tasty. And I really like chives, so I'm gonna put all of it in. Throw all of that in. Also just give it some color as well. At the moment it's all white. But all it needs now is just the Chinese cabbage. And I think I might have actually measured this perfect. Once I add the cabbage, it should be just about right. Now, I mean, we've basically done most of it. All that's left is the cabbage, but the cabbage is gonna be a little bit longer while we wait for it to wilt. You can even just give it a squeeze. You can see all that liquid that's coming out there. And this does help actually squeezing it as well. It just really helps draw out all the moisture. So I'll probably leave this for another maybe hour. And after an hour, I'll come back, I'll wash it out. Give it a rinse just to get all the salty water out and then really squeeze everything out. And then we'll add it to the rest of this. What do I call this? So I call it just a brine. At what point does it become kimchi? Once the cabbage is added? Or is that kimchi ready? I don't know. I'll call it the kimchi. But we'll be back in an hour. Okay, so it's been 
not really an hour. It's been maybe 30, 40 minutes, but I think this cabbage is basically ready. Oh yeah, look at that, that's nice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and wash this with clean water and then drain it out and we'll be right back. We're back. All that's left to do now is just to grab a handful of the cabbage and just squeeze out as much water as you can and then add it in. Probably could have gotten away with two cabbages actually, but whatever. I'm gonna add that in and that's already smelling really nice actually. Distribute everything evenly. And that's it. Well, I mean, it's not ready yet. It still has to ferment, but for now that's it. That's already ready to go. So I'm gonna close this off. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave one of these open so that it does flex a little bit and any buildup of gas from the fermentation can just come out. I'm just gonna set this at room temperature for start off with a week. We'll go check back up on it in a week. We'll see how it tastes. If it tastes good, then we can move it to the fridge and that's where we'll store it long term. Or we'll just keep it going fermenting a bit longer. This doesn't taste spicy at all, even though it looks a bit spicy. It's quite nice, it's quite mild, very light, very like a little bit fruity with the like with the addition of the pear. It's gonna be delicious. And if you watched my last video, which I posted before the New Year's, I made sauerkraut and it's been, how long has it been? Not even a week yet, but this is going so well. You can see all the bubbles in there. It's really active. And all that liquid that's come out, and you can see how much more liquid has come out of there. But this is doing really well. I haven't tasted it yet, but I am gonna try push out more of the air bubbles. Really get that all submerged. Put it back for a couple of days and then we'll uh, taste it again. Another thing I forgot to mention is actually that kimchi, the water kimchi, once that's fully fermented and that brine is nice and tangy and everything, it is great for making Korean cold noodles. It's great as the soup base because it's like the tangy cold with the thin noodles. It's gonna be delicious. And we have a lot of that brine. So when that's ready, we'll do that as well. I guess, that, I guess that's everything I got to do today. If you enjoyed this video again make sure you hit the like button even though i still don't know what it does and subscribe if you're new here and hopefully wait for the next video